نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اهله واصحابه ومن تبعه باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد يقول الله تعالى في القران الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون الله سبحانه وتعالى تلقى في سوره الحشر بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فانساهم انفسهم اولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي اصحاب النار واصحاب الجنه اصحاب الجنه هم الفائزون اللهم اجعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين My dear brother and sister of Islam, I began by saying all praises, all gratitude, and all thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek refuge in Allah from the sin that we commit and the faults within ourselves. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide, no one could misguide. And whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leave astray, no one could guide. We bear witness there is no deity worthy to worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness indeed Prophet Muhammad alayhi afdal wa ask as salam his final and his last messenger. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless Prophet Muhammad and his family and his companion and whoever follow him until the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. Well, I share with you a couple of verses. One verse from Surah Ali Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us, O you believe, fear Allah as you should be feared and die not. unless you are in a state of Islam. The second verse I shared with you from Surah Al-Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us, O you believe, fear Allah, and everyone must to consider and look what you have done for tomorrow. Tomorrow here means your judgment day. And do not be like the one who forgot Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make them to forget their own self and who they are. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in that verse, the people of the hellfire and the people of paradise, they're not equal. They are not equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the people of paradise, they are the successful one. So brother and sister of Islam, I would like to wish you all first a very happy and blessed Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayer, our fasting, our devotion and supplication and dua and forgive any shortcoming that we may have Allahumma ameen my dear brother and sister of Islam today's khutbah will be about the blessed month of Ramadan some of us they take that month extremely serious and some of us they take it very light and you'll be surprised what I'm about to tell you some people ask me they have the title they are Muslim And he said, is the month of Ramadan past or still not, okay, or still coming? So some people are like, you, you take it very seriously. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors for us in that month to receive the Jannah al Firdaus Allahumma Ameen. As most of you are well aware, the most important month for mankind is the month of Ramadan. And the most important 10 days in that great month is the last 10 days of that month and the most important night in the last 10 days is Laylatul Qadr so why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that and said that we put bi-qawri ta'ala ba'ala bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr 
و ما ادراک ما لیلت القدر لیلت القدر خیر من الف شهر What does this mean, brother, sister of Islam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what do you know about Laylatul Qadr? Anzalnahu. What, what he referring when he said the word Anzalnahu? He didn't say the Quran. He referring to the Holy Quran. If you, if you pay attention, inna anzalnahu, he referring to the Holy Quran, if you Laylatul Qadr. And then he tell us, Laylatul Qadr is better for you and I and everyone than washing your lifetime. Because if you take the alf, uh, a thousand month and divide it by 12 they come to that to come to 83.3 years of your life which is more than the average person live another word what Allah SWT let us to understand that Laylatul Qadr is better than your lifetime of worshipping and also brother and sister the most important day of our week now is Yom Juma, and this is here Layla uh, Shah Ramadan, and also uh, our uh, every Juma here we review those are the most important days and month for us as Muslim. This is where we review our spiritual needs. This is where we strengthen our iman and faith, and this is where we strengthen our taqwa with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So now let us talk about Nuzul al-Qur'an. But before I talk about Nuzul al-Qur'an and the revelation, in order for us brother and sister to appreciate something, you must have the opposite of it. Like what? For example, if you did not eat for three, four days, you really appreciate the food. And also, if you can in, in Alaska outdoor without a blanket or without the proper clothing you when you see a blanket later on you will understand and appreciate how good this blanket is to you if you own a car stop using a car for a couple months and rely on on uh, the buses and someone give you a ride why I'm giving you all this example this way you understand and appreciate before Nuzul al-Qur'an. So let's talk then. Before Nuzul al-Qur'an, how is this world we were living in, how did it look like? I want to give you a glimpse. This way we can appreciate this really holy month and give this month what you really deserve. Before Nuzul al-Qur'an, brother and sister of Islam, the world was controlled by two forces. The force and the Roman. And they were controlling this world just like one time the Soviet Union and the United States. At the time of the force and the Roman, there was no laws, rules, regulation, justice, equality. None of that stuff exists. What was exist then? What it was exist at that time is was robbery, looting, theft, rape, adultery. This is before Muslim Quran. If you have problem or issue with someone and then you take care of it yourself there is no court there's no justice you are on your own this is before Nuzul al-Quran and uh, the Arab at that time they were worshipping idols they know any better they make their own idols and they worship them and then further they were went as far as with no education about deen or rules or heart. They were burying the female infant alive because they were waging wars against one another. When they were waging wars against one another, they always liked to have the male to defend them. And they used to bury this infant female alive. No, absolutely heartless and brainless for them to do so. But what the Quran, brother and sister of Islam, was revealed to Prophet Muhammad the light, the rules and the regulation came in. And people, they start enjoying their life afterwards. So how, brother and sister of Islam, the, the, the revelation came to Prophet Muhammad He was in, uh, as you all know, he goes to uh, Bar Harak, and uh, the 
top of the mountain are also called Jabal and Nur. And you used to med meditate and, and uh, uh, thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he revealed the Holy Quran, first of all, let me back up, it came from the highest heaven to the lowest heaven all at once. And was revealed to Prophet Muhammad in the course of 23 years. It did not come to him all at once. And there is reason behind this, a wisdom from Allah. And the wisdom this way that people take the changes gradually, not all at once. Because Ta'ala in Surah Bani Israel, we have divided the Holy Quran in portion so that you may recite it to the people gradually and we have revealed it little by little. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, revealed the Holy Quran to Prophet Muhammad as is needed. When, or when he had a question, you notice a lot of time in the Holy Quran you say, Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Qul a'uzu rabbi nas. What does this mean? Say, say this. Another word, when you have a question, the revelation comes in and then it say this or say that. This is why it was coming as a portion. Brother and sister, I want to bring to your attention the Holy Quran, the only religious book in the whole entire world that it is memorized from one page to another page verbatim. And as young as nine and 10 years old, as young as 19 years old. And, and this is the only book that it could come overnight in the event. Anyone decide to remove all the religious book and burn it, toss it in the ocean. The only book will come overnight is the Holy Quran. There is no other religious book on this world that will match or come close to it. The Holy Quran, brother and sister, the only book it had an answer for every question and a solution for every problem. Now, when Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he used to go and meditate in, in Jabal al Nur, the first thing, what did he hear? بقوله تعالى في سورة العرب العرب بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم افرق باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق افرق وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم الله سبحانه وتعالى سن جبريل to Prophet Muhammad and he asked him to read and the translation, what I just shared with you, read in the name of your Lord. Who created man from a cloth? Read, your Lord is the most gracious. The one who taught man by means of pen. He taught man what he did not know. Now we understand a little bit about the revelation of the Quran and, uh, and, and uh, how it came in to us and it came gradually from Prophet Muhammad Now what we supposed to do in or what do you supposed to do as soon as you hear the word or understand Shah Ramadan is coming. Most of us immediately think that the first thing is Siyam. But actually I want you to any time you hear Ramadan, remember Nuzul al Quran. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again he tells us here the Shah Ramadan, this is the, the, the month is the one the Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. And whoever among you witness that Shah, fast. And if you cannot fast, do it some other time. Or if you are traveling, do it some other time. 
Now, what are we supposed to do then when we hear about the month of Ramadan? What action we have to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in Surah Al-Baqarah, بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون الله سبحانه وتعالى تقول us oh you believe fasting has been prescribed up on you as been prescribed on the people before you so another word you are not the only one fasting the Ummah before us, they were fasting also for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brother and sister, there's a lot of benefit we do get in the month of Ramadan if we pay attention and prepare ourselves for it. Ramadan, brother and sister, we should take it as a golden opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He give us each year to erase our bad deeds. Because this is where the multiplication of good deeds happens in the month of Ramadan, if we understand. This is to strengthen our iman and faith in Allah. The, uh, and the generosity and mercy and kindness, it happens in Ramadan. Guidance and devotion, it happens in Ramadan. Forgiveness and repentance, you're forgiving your brother. You are upset and angry with someone you have not called for many, many months. And then another brother wake you up and tell you, call your brother, call your sister, call this, or, or make a friend with this person. See what Ramadan does for us. Increases our understanding and knowledge of Islam. It teaches us also self-control. And also another thing it does, it unites us as one ummah. Look at in the month of Ramadan, you see people that you never seen before. You meet people, you bring us together here. And this is what it does. And also at your home, you wind up with seeing people, you're inviting people for iftar. So look at that, it unites us, it keeps us one moment. Now, about fasting, there's a lot of benefit, brother and sister, I would like to share with you about the month of, uh, uh, of, of the fasting in the month of Ramadan. It teaches us and to obey and comply with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. Fasting teaches us tolerance in case we have food shortage. And it also it lets you understand what is the poor people go through during any times when they are sitting on their bridge and be lifting their hands and say, I need some food. You are fasting. You did not have food and drinks. Now you understand what this person sitting on that bridge going through. And then what you do, you go and give and you give generously. And also it help us, fasting, it help us to break the unhealthy habits. If you're smoking, you're trying to stop alcohol and you cannot. Or you are going on the internet seeing things that you're not supposed to look at. You know during this hours, you're not supposed to do any of that stuff. And then what you do, and then you get used to not to do the bad things. And this is another benefit, brother and sister, from fasting. Now, we fasted, now we have to eat afterwards. What Prophet Muhammad tell us about eating? And uh, what did he, what he tell us? Let me share that with you. He said, you should fill your stomach one third of food. And you fill your stomach one third of water and one-third of air. In other words, you divide your stomach on three, one, two, three. And then you'll be able to perform good. So now, brother and sister, what happened, what we are, this is what we heard, but what we do now. We abstained all day long from eating and drinking. And we're really hungry. And, and then uh, we break, now we're about to break fast. What do we do? We start eating very heavily, and we forget the rules and regulation that Prophet Muhammad advised us to do. And we eat a lot, and to the point that you cannot sometimes see the tip of your shoes. And you want to go to do wudu, <laughs> and, and it's very difficult for you to lift up your foot because you overeat. And, and, and then some people in this particular month they gain weight 
instead of losing weight. And they wind up losing control as well. So we need to understand how our stomach works. Our stomach, brother and sister, is just like a balloon. So when you, when you expand it to a certain amount, and then later on, you try, you try to shrink, it does not shrink fast. And it takes some time. Some people, they have to make an operation to shrink their stomach. And then you lose the benefit, really a, a great benefit of the month of Ramadan, of the fasting in the month of Ramadan. So what you do, you really have to control yourself. So how can we do this then? Let me share it with you. And alhamdulillah, this is what I have been doing in the last two, three years. Before, I was eating a lot. I'm going to share that with you. It might help you out. Soon as you break away, soon as you hear that band, what you're supposed to do, eat some dates and some soup and light food. Come and pray, mother. Now your stomach is about ready and understand that you are about to eat. And every, all, everything in your body you start getting ready for food coming in. You spend about 10 or 12 minutes after sunnah and then you go. And then you eat, you must eat very light. Very light. Do not overfill. This way you can pray for a week. This way you do not create a excuse that you are unable to pray because you overeat. It happens a lot. I see a lot of people, they say, I cannot pray. Well, you did it to yourself. So what you do, moderation is the best thing to do. So brother and sister, remember these advices uh, from Prophet Muhammad and, and uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide us and, and, and help us in this. Now brother and sister, about uh, the month of Ramadan, Month of Ramadan is full, is full of opportunity that we can collect and erase hasanat. From everything you do, it gets multiplied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us on a regular basis, without the month of Ramadan, let me share with you from Surah Al-Baqarah, Ba'ala Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مئة حبة والله يضاعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول us is just when you're doing a good deed it's just like one grain produces seven ear and each ear it has seven hundred and it does not stop at 700. Some people, they understand it is only 700 times. No. Did you hear the word? Allah subhanahu wa I can even multiply more than the 700. More than the 700. So please remember this in everything you do. A smile in someone's face. Feeding a, 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 a hungry person. A sponsoring iftar. Paying zakat, there's so much you could do, therefore you can uh, uh, collect as much as you can in the month of Ramadan. An Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Iza jaa Ramadan, futihat abwaab al-jannah wa gulikat abwaab al-nar, wa sakhabat al-shayateen. This means, brother and sister, when Ramadan comes, the paradise doors, the heaven doors is open for us. And the hellfire doors is being closed and the shaitan is being chained down. When you hear this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rasulullah tell us this, and he gets his, all his information from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really loves us and he wants us to go to heaven. He does not want us to suffer and go to the hellfire. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إن الله هو الغفور الرحيم. Brother and sister, also I would like to remind you about erasing 
bad deeds in the month of Ramadan or any time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us in Surah Hud, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأقم الصلاة طرفي النهار وزلفا من الليل إن الحسنات يذهبن السيئات ذلك ذكر للذاكرين إن الحسنات يذهبن السيئات The good deeds erases bad deeds And also remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the judgment day brother and sister He will judge us by a scale our good deeds it will be put in one side of the scale and the bad deeds will be put in the other side of the scale and then of your good deeds way more we will go to heaven inshallah if your bad deeds goes way more you're going to go to the hellfire and this is Allah SWT tell us that numerous times at least five six times in the Holy Quran so please remember that because here we are under the mercy of Allah Especially this wonderful month is coming up. And also, I want you to remember uh, the best time to do dua in the month of Ramadan. This is where the doors is open. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us the uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ba'da Bismillah ar rahim وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ فَإِنِّي قَرِيبُ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Allah SWT is talking to Prophet Muhammad and telling him, If my servant asks you about me, tell them I am near. I will respond to them. And then, brother and sister, when you are asking Allah SWT, ask him the Asma'il Husna. Another word, if you want Shifa, Ya Shafi, Ya Rahman, or Hamid. Ya Qawi, if you want Allah uh, to protect you, Ya Sattar, for every Asma'i Husna, look for the name that would suit your needs. The Asma'i Husna. Look for the name that it will suit your need. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond because He ordered us in the Holy Quran when we ask in Him to ask Him the Asma'i Husna. And also, I want you to remember always this. The dua is part of ibadah. When you raise your arms and you ask him Allah is worshipping, you are worshipping Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Wahid, Al-Ahad, Allah. Bi qawlihi ta'ala fi surah Al-Mu'min, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, wa qala rabbukum ad'uni astajib lakum, inna al-lazina yastakbiruna an ibadati sayadkuluna jahannama dakhirin. Another word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala joined al-dua uh, uh, wal-ibadah together. Listen to it. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَةِ سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said to ask because it's part of ibadah. إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَةِ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِينَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم اللهم اهل علينا شهر رمضان بالامن والايمان اللهم أهل علينا شهر رمضان بالأمن والإيمان والسلامة والإسلام والتوفيق لما تحب وترضى اللهم أعنا على الصيام والقيام اللهم أعنا على الصيام والقيام اللهم تقبل صيامنا وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم الأموات اللهم أعف عنا وعن أبائنا وأمهاتنا من عذاب النار وتوفنا مع الأبرار يا منزل الماء من السماء يا منزل الماء من السماء يا من قلت للنار قولي بردا وسلاما على إبراهيم يا من تقول للشمس ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة
وقنا عذاب النار يا مجيب الدعاء يا الله يا مالك يوم الدين يا قوي يا عزيز يا جبار ادخلنا جنة الفردوس الأعلى اللهم آمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعم يزيدكم وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مرفوضا